Hi, this is the second of the three videos on the three homework questions on following objects. And when you look at this question, it might look like it's not exactly describing a falling object. It's describing a rock that's thrown upward. But we still call this falling object because throughout its entire motion, it is accelerating downward. So we say it's in free fall while it's uh, in its uh, entire motion. So this uh, question also has hints that link to specific textbook sections with the specific examples. But you do have to do a little more work to connect from the example to the question that you are actually solving. So let me go down to the example. The example being referred to is calculating position and velocity of a falling object, a rock thrown upward. And this example is useful for really for the graphs. Um, read through it and it has these graphs of the positions, velocity, and time. And what you can see here is when the rock is at the top of its motion, at that point is when the velocity is zero. Uh, you can understand it as rock is neither going up nor down, so it's um, very momentarily at rest, so its velocity is at zero. So once you have that, then you do need to go back to the kinematics equations you have seen up here. So you have seen these kinematics equations for objects in free fall. Um, this describes the, how the velocity is changing with the acceleration of minus g. And you have this position and other things. Um, I want to focus on this velocity equation. So what we are saying is at the top of the motion, the velocity of the free-falling object is zero. So this equation becomes zero is equal to your initial velocity minus g, gravitational acceleration, times time. So solving this for time, you can get the amount of time it takes for the rock to reach the top of its motion. So this is probably an equation you want to write down so that as you are doing that homework question, you have it handy for reference. Uh, let me show you the simulation to help you develop your intuition and also to help us answer part B with a little bit of a shortcut. So this is the same simulation we used to before, but instead of dropping the ball, we want to give it a little initial velocity upward. I think the problem gives a larger velocity than that, but let me just do it at 25 meters per second. Then when I run the simulation, oops, uh, that's too fast. <laughs> let me zoom out. All right. All right, that seems better. I think I can zoom in a little more. And let me scale this stopwatch. And give this ball upward the velocity again. And let's uh, give it a try. All right, that seems reasonable. That seems intuitively what you would expect to see when a ball you throw upward. So this time, let me actually try to measure how long it will take to reach the very top of its motion. And stop. Yeah, 2.5 seconds. And you can verify this with the formula that you wrote down. So g, uh, gravitational acceleration, is approximately 10 meters per second squared. I gave it an initial velocity of upward 25 meters per second. And when you divide 25 meters per second by g, 10 meters per second squared, you get 2.5 seconds. So what we see here is what you would calculate based on that formula that you saw on the previous screen. All right, so this is all very exciting. And the reason I set up that simulation was to help us answer this question. What maximum height does the rock reach? Now, technically, yes, you can use this 
kinematic equations and you can use the y height now you know the time plug those in um, so you can actually do that and if you feel comfortable doing that then please do let me show you a little shortcut and the shortcut is based on this idea when you look at this uh, motion of the ball there's a symmetry to it how long it takes to go up how long it to, to come down it seems like it uh, a mirrored version of each other how long it takes to go up how long it takes to go down so instead of thinking of this like a ball that's thrown up we can think of it like this motion a ball that starting from here at rest and is being dropped and because of that symmetry you are going to know how long it's going to take for this ball to drop down to ground 2.5 seconds or whatever you calculated with your number then given that time in a previous question we had this much simpler formula distance traveled is one half times acceleration times time squared you can just plug in the time into the formula understanding that you are not answering the exact question that your problem asked for but knowing that the numerical answer that you get for this motion here is the exact same numerical answer that you get for the first half of the motion so as long as you're clear on that, then this shortcut is fine. It makes for an easier calculation. If you have any questions, please ask me. And we'll look at the third example of not falling object, but an object under constant acceleration.